My name is Anna Nelson. Um, I am doing a movie analysis on Girl Interrupted, and we are comparing that with Borderline Personality Disorder. Uh, the presentation of the movie analysis of the movie Girl Interrupted um, is based on the real life story of Susanna Kaysen, who authored the book that was then made into the film the author is taking note of. The time period is that of the 1960s during the Vietnam War. Susanna is the main character, but may equally share the spotlight with another lead character named Lisa. Susanna is diagnosed in the movie as a borderline personality disorder, and the author will look at the comparison of the movie and the actual defining characteristics of borderline personality disorder as defined by the American Psychiatric Association. Um, they have this, the American Psychiatric Association has a publication called the DSM-5, which is a diagnostic manual for uh, healthcare workers to look at criteria in order to diagnose. In order to understand what is abnormal, we first have to know what is normal. Um, Ver Carolis describes normal personality as one that is flexible and adaptive to the environment and the situations that a person lives in. It is when that personality becomes rigid and inflexible, unflexible, I'm sorry, that the personality is failing to adapt and therefore the person is dysfunctional in the life, in life and in situations. Um, personality disorders, the DSM-5 personality disorders is a category where all personality disorders can be found and explained. There are three categories of personality disorders among the DSM-5. There are cluster A, cluster B, and cluster C. Cluster A disorders are marked by odd or eccentric behaviors. These patients have bizarre belief systems and are not concerned with the reaction or the opinion of others. Cluster B, which is where we will find our borderline personality disorder, is characterized by dramatic and attention-seeking responses to life. This category is also known for its patients being masters at manipulation. Category C disorders are plagued by extreme anxiety and fear. These patients tend to blame themselves for all things and internalize guilt. And again, the personality, the borderline personality disorder falls into cluster B category, is known for dramatic reactions, attention seeking behaviors and manipulation. Borderline personality disorder defined by the APA or the American Psychiatric Association uh, states that borderline personality patients have a pattern of response and emotion that will deviate away from the mainstream culture. And again, this just touches on that they produce a diagnostic criteria for mental health conditions to help healthcare professionals and prescribers both identify and treat health, mental health disorders, and that publication is referred to as the DSM-5. DSM-5 is the most current of the diagnosis or diagnostic criteria. And borderline personality disorder according to the DSM-5. This this slide will give us an overview of borderline personality disorder um, and how it is diagnosed by healthcare professionals. Um, the borderline personality disorder in the DSM-5 states that to be diagnosed, the patient would have to have five or more of the following symptoms present. Um, this may look like the patient tends to have exaggerated fears of abandonment, they are impulsive and compulsive, both in life and sex. 
The borderline personality patient will have extreme fluctuation in self-concept and self-esteem. So their view of self can uh, vary drastically. They will also have extreme fluctuations in relationships that in the relationships that they actually make. Um, they may have self-harm tendencies and suicide attempts that are made with attention-seeking qualities and motives. Um, so their self-harm is usually attention-seeking in nature. Uh, the borderline personality patient will have feelings of depression and emptiness. They may also abuse drugs or alcohol. They may show increased signs of aggression and angry outbursts. And they may also have paranoia or disassociative symptoms where they feel as though they are not connected to their physical bodies or surroundings. So how the movie begins. So how the Girl Interrupted begins. In the movie, Susanna Kaysen is shown at the beginning as being different than all the other girls her age. Susanna does not plan on going on to college. Um, she really just is kind of blase about what she is going to do in the future. While most other girls her age are going off to colleges, they have aspirations for the future, whether that's staying at home and being a homemaker or going into the work field. Um, as the movie comes on, Susanna is having a tube shoved down her throat and appears to have overdosed on a medication while a man stand up, stands outside of the door of the hospital room. Later you will find out that the man outside of the hospital door is a friend's father who is, Susanna is having an affair with. The movie clips in and out of some different scenes and time frames where Susanna is exhibiting some of the characteristics of her illness. So it's like it's following Susanna's thought train of, of different moments that she is thinking about where she is exhibiting the signs and symptoms of borderline personality disorder. Uh, Susanna is in her late teenage years at the start of the movie, so about high school graduation and shortly thereafter. And it is difficult to follow due to her daydreaming of past events and thoughts. Um, so at the beginning of the movie, it's really cutting in and out of different time frames in Susanna's life, and it makes it hard for the viewer to really grasp what is going on and the, the reason behind that at first. Um, again, as you see these rapid changing of scenes, they are in relation to Susanna's thought pattern, and due to that, we're able to compare some of these scenes and her thought pattern against the DSM-5. So um, these are my takes that relate to the DSM-5 um, based on the movie and its content. Uh, number one, Susanna has impulsivity in sexual relationships. Um, that is seen when she is first with the older man who is the husband of a family friend and the father of one of her classmates, Bonnie. Second, later on in the movie, she is having a sexual relationship with a younger man who is the older brother of another classmate of hers. Um, both of these show her impulsivity, impulsivity and um, her seeking sexual gratitude. Um, second is reoccurring suicidal ideations with an, with an attempted suicide. Um, as the movie starts, Susanna again is in the hospital, a tube going down her throat. You hear the doctor saying, well, why did you take the bottle of aspirin? with the vodka and she said and her comment is i oh i had a headache um at another point in another flashback uh susanna is in bed with tobias and she thinks she states that she thinks about suicide all the time and she wants to have this lengthy conversation with him about suicidal ideations and when he is not responsive to her attention seeking conversation she instantly gets furiated and she gets up and she leaves and from the movie we can conclude that that was the last of their relationship for for a time being substance abuse is another characteristic of borderline personality disorder and we see that susanna takes aspirin 
with alcohol. I do believe that they said it was vodka. Um, the movie also presents scenes where Susanna is at a party and how she meets one of the men she has sexual relations with early on in the movie. Uh, later on in the movie, uh, Susanna runs away from the insane asylum with Lisa and they get into a van, they hitchhike, get into a van and you see her partaking in smoking marijuana. And then number four, disassociative symptoms. Um, as the movie goes through the rapidly changing scenes at the beginning, um, Susanna states that she believes that the bones in her hand had disappeared. There was no way that she took the bottle of aspirin because she didn't have bones in her hands. And when asked about that, she tells the doctor, oh, well, they reappeared. So she is showing symptoms of being, of delusions um, and disassociated symptoms. And then a pattern of intense and unstable relationships. So Susanna shows throughout the movie that she has fast relationships with the opposite sex and that they start strong and sexual in nature, but they also end as abruptly as they start. Susanna is involved with two men at the start of the movie, one married man and one younger man. She then has a relationship with a male worker at the asylum and eventually makes a pass at her friend Lisa when they run away. Treatment of borderline personality disorder. Research shows the beginning of treatment for the patient with borderline personality disorder should start with acknowledging their diagnosis and making them aware of it. Many healthcare professionals do not tell their patients that they have borderline personality disorder out of fear that the patient will not accept the diagnosis and may stop treatment. This has been shown to be a false belief and research in one study shows that there is better reception to treatment in patients who are told of the diagnosis up front. In the article called Improving Patient-Centered Communication of the Borderline Personality Disorder Diagnosis, this this journal article was published in the Journal of Mental Health in 2016, and it recorded a hundred percent of the patients who were told up front about their diagnosis were accepting of the diagnosis and also sought treatment. Genetics. Uh, as Susanna is being told by the therapist that she has borderline traits, in the movie she questions why and if there is a genetic link. Uh, Susanna's questioning of the genetic link to her condition is also in the presence of her parents, who she repeatedly blames for her hospitalization. Um, unfortunately, they were not the cause of her hospitalization. She did sign herself in willingly. Um, this example of her unsteady relationship with her parents and her manipula manipulation to entice guilt is also symptoms of borderline personality disorder. Um, patients, it is stated though that patients are children of parents who have borderline personality disorder traits or the diagnosis. Uh, are more likely to suffer from the disorder. In the film, they do quote that children of someone with borderline personality disorder are five times more likely to develop it. Um, I did just find that there is a correlation between a more likelihood of children with borderline parents to, to have borderline personality disorder. Manipulation. Manipulation is a cardinal sign in borderline personality disorder. It is used to promote self and to facilitate the dramatics of their actions and responses. In Girl Interrupted, Susanna's manipulation is seen in all of her relationships. Um, Susanna uses the orderly's infatuation with her for her own benefit. She allows Lisa to take charge of breaking rules and being mean to other girls so that she can come out innocent and not guilty.
impulsiveness and sexuality in the borderline patient. Impulsive, impulsivity is a common symptom of the borderline personality disorder patient. Um, impulsiveness and sexual relationship can look like numerous sexual partners or risky sexual behaviors, such as not using protection. Research has linked a correlation between early age of intercourse and borderline personality disorder. And other research suggests that childhood abuse and sexual abuse may contribute to problems with intimacy and trust in relationships and may be a direct link to the development of borderline personality disorder. Um, in the movie, Susanna is in family counseling with her mother and her father when, Su when her mother states that when Susanna was a baby, she rolled off the changing table and broke her leg. The mother goes on to say that Susanna was put into a full body cast as a result and that they later tied her down in the car and took her on a long trip while she was in this full body cast. Uh, as a nurse, this, this scene stood out to me. Um, a broken leg that results in a full body cast would suggest to me personally that Susanna may have broken the femur, which is more of a, it's a larger bone, harder to break, um, especially in young children whose bones are more flexible and less likely to break. Um, this part of the movie struck me as odd um, due to both the guilt of the mother and the extent of the injury. Uh, and then the mother also further inducing suffering of the small child um, by strapping her down into a car and taking her on a trip. Uh, for me, this brought red flags. Um, I did some research and it shows that 30% of children under the age of one who end up with a femur fracture are the result of physical abuse. Um, so with that scene in the movie, I, I had to question the upbringing of Susanna, which we won't, we don't know from the movie, um, but wondered if that possibly could have helped in the development of the borderline personality disorder. And in conclusion, Susanna, Savannah, Susanna is the main character of the movie in Girl Interrupted. She is diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and shows the audience a fair representation of mental illness. The movie reflects the author's time in a mental institution in the 1960s and it is based on a true story of Susanna Kaysen. Uh, the movie showed me how a therapeutic relationship with a patient can make a difference in a patient's outcome. Uh, towards the end of the movie, Dr. Wick is the woman psychiatrist that Susanna starts meeting with. Uh, Dr. Wick, in my opinion, was the only healthcare professional in the movie that maintained a therapeutic relationship with Susanna. Dr. Wick stated factual information and through that was able to guide Susanna through the journey of recovery from borderline personality disorder. As Su Susanna was released from the hospital, she states that her new diagnosis is recovered borderline personality disorder. And research shows that recovery and borderline personality disorder is not uncommon. It is reported that after 10 years, 93% of borderline patients show a remission in symptoms. And with that fact, there is hope for the borderline patient. Winona Ryder plays Susanna and Angelina Jolie plays the villain, Lisa. Both actresses were in the height of their career in 1999 when the movie came out. And using these highly noted celebrities made this movie successful in its time of release and also brought notice to borderline personality disorder as a mental health condition. I personally believe that this movie was successful at sparking interest in mental health issues and was able to show the progression that society had made in decreasing the stigma of mental health diagnosis. Uh, the biggest thing that I will take from this movie is the importance of a therapeutic relationship between a healthcare provider and their patient. And these are the references that are cited throughout the presentation. 
to give credit to those who who did research and published their works. Thank you.